You've all heard about Disney ducking the wrongful death claim. And if you haven't, you're about to, because there's a number of things about this story that concern me. But first of all, if you would like a refreshing change from the mainstream media, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I'm a barrister practicing in England and Wales, but I do comment on stories from around the world, such as this one here. So quick caveat before we get on to the story. I'm obviously not a US attorney, so I can't confidently assess US law, but I can comment on legal principles generally, and I can tell you what my thoughts are on this case thus far. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. So let's talk about this story, shall we? It's a very sad story. Uh, Mr. Piccolo, his wife and his mother chose to eat at a pub, uh, which is located within the Disney grounds. Now, Disney owns uh, Disney Springs, but leases out some of its dining areas and shopping spaces, which is something that I'll come to in a minute. Now, they informed their server numerous times, reportedly, that um, Mr. Piccolo's wife had a severe allergy to nuts and dairy products. Uh, she ordered the vegan fritter, scallops, onion rings and a vegetable shepherd's pie. The waiter apparently guaranteed that the food was allergen-free even though some of the items were not served with allergen-free flags, according to the lawsuit. Now, 45 minutes after eating, according to the lawsuit, as I read in the news, uh, she started to have difficulty breathing whilst she was shopping, collapsed, and then later died in hospital. Upon medical examination, it was determined that she died as a result of anaphylaxis due to elevated levels of dairy and nut in her system. So clearly, they believed that this came from the meal that she just consumed. So they file a wrongful death lawsuit against Disney for uh, the sum of $50,000. So about £38,900, according to the uh, calculation here. And so the claim wasn't for, you know, two, three million dollars or whatever. It was $50,000. Although here comes the reason that this story hit the international news. And thus I'm talking about it here. Although there's one or two other things that I'll talk about that don't directly relate to this particular bit, but nonetheless. So according to the news, a recent filing by Disney's lawyers make the headlines because of their response. They argued that the case ought to be dismissed and settled out of court because Mr. Piccolo agreed to the company's terms and conditions when he had a free trial for one month of Disney Plus in 2019. And again in 2023, when he purchased the Disney theme park tickets using the Disney Plus account. Now, Disney, according to this filing, have argued that these terms include an arbitration clause which applies to all disputes. Now, for those that are not familiar, arbitration is a form of alternative dispute resolution. In other words, you don't go to court, you solve it with an arbitrator, which is still a decision made by someone else. But nonetheless, um, there's lots of other rules about arbitration, which I won't get into in this video. And this says that the terms and conditions that he agreed to had an arbitration clause which applied to all disputes, including those involving the Walt Disney Company or its affiliates. And furthermore, that the Walt Disney Parks and Resorts is an affiliate to the Walt Disney Company. So breaking that down somewhat, their argument, according to this, was that because he had a free trial of Disney Plus in 2019 and again in 2023, and when he purchased the tickets for the Disney theme park using the Disney Plus account, he agreed to this arbitration clause, meaning it cannot go to court. Now, the lawyers for Mr. Piccolo have obviously responded to say, well, that's ridiculous. In fact, I quote, they say that their argument for dismissal is surreal and say that, in effect, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts is explicitly seeking to bar 150 million Disney Plus subscribers from ever prosecuting a wrongful death case in front of a jury, even if the case facts have nothing to do with Disney Plus. Clearly, they want to go for a jury trial because of the seriousness of the case. And Frankly, the argument of Mr. Piccolo's lawyer here seems perfectly reasonable because this lawsuit filing seems to suggest that it would bar 150 million, as I read here, subscribers of Disney, Disney Plus, uh, from ever prosecuting one of these cases in court. But there's another couple of things that struck me here. First of all, we've got, is that a fair contract term? Because at least in England and Wales, if a contract term is unfair, it is unenforceable. 
I can't speak to US law. Maybe there's a mirror provision in US law, and maybe there's a US attorney that is watching that can tell me in the comments whether that's right or email me. My email address is, is below. Let me know if there's a similar clause which says an unfair term is unenforceable, particularly when consumers are involved, because we certainly have that in our Consumer Rights Act. If a term is deemed to be unfair, which is one that sort of gets a company out of its obligations or is unduly giving the company an unfair advantage over the consumer, etc. Those kind of terms are going to be unfair and thus unenforceable. Um, but the second thing is that Disney said that they don't own or operate the pub at which they dined. But aside from unfair terms, again speaking from England and Wales perspective, a company cannot contract out of responsibility for negligence, which I'll explain in a minute, for something that results in personal injury or death. So even if a company had a term that said we are not responsible for these things that, you know, our negligence results in personal injury or death, then the courts will just disregard those and they won't be enforceable. And aside from that, another complication is whether or not the terms and conditions of the Disney Plus account can be conflated with the tickets purchased for the Disney theme park. I suspect not, but again, not being a US lawyer, I cannot comment for certain on US law. But if I were the lawyer on the case, I'd be looking very closely at both sets of terms and conditions and arguing that one cannot be conflated and overrule the other. Because for each contract, you have to look at the specific aim and purpose and nature of the contract and whether it can be overridden or conflated with another. The other thing that strikes me as really strange about this case is the attorney's response on behalf of Disney, who says as follows, We are deeply saddened by the family's loss and understand their grief. Given that this restaurant is neither owned nor operated by Disney, we are merely defending ourselves against the plaintiff's attorney's attempt to include us in their lawsuit against the restaurant. That in and of itself might be a reasonable suggestion to make. Much more reasonable than relying on terms and conditions that have been brought up from a Disney Plus account. And I'll come back to why I think that in a moment. Now, and there's two reasons for that. But first of all, if they don't own or operate the restaurant, then this should just be what we would call an indemnity, whereby you add another party and say, well, it's not our fault, it's their fault. And so you drag them in and you essentially, as part of your defence, you blame them and say, well, anything that went wrong here, any responsibility and liability that arises here is with them, not with us. So that's presumably, I mean, I hope that that's how they've argued it as well, but um, I haven't seen the filing myself. But that's how it really ought to be argued. If they don't own or operate the restaurant itself, they should be blaming the restaurant and it, the liability should lie at their door. And perhaps, um, just clutching at straws here, perhaps the lawsuit's been brought against Disney because they feel that they would be able to pay out and the restaurant perhaps not. But of course, the main thing here is Disney's reputation in all of this. Because let's try to remain neutral here. If Disney doesn't own or operate the restaurant and had no input and no control whatever with regard to the restaurant, its food and, and so on, then of course Disney wouldn't really be responsible. If they had no contractual liability, they had no actual liability, then why would Disney be held responsible for it? Now on a technicality, perhaps that's one reason they've brought this up in one of the filings as Here's yet another technical reason why we should be kept out of this lawsuit or force it down the track of arbitration, which is something I'll talk about in another video if people are interested in that. But the main thing here is the reputation. And if I were one of the lawyers there, I would be looking to manage the reputation and the potential reputational damage to Disney with this hitting the headlines. Because the way this hits the headlines is well, as follows. Um, from Sky News, Disney claims husband can't sue over wrongful death because he signed up to Disney Plus trial. That makes Disney look really bad, however you look at this, whether they are liable, whether they actually are responsible or not. And just as an addendum while I'm editing the video, I did say I'd come back to negligence and I didn't. So it's very simple. In most contractual relationships or neighborly sort of relationships, there is a duty of care or there very often arises a duty of care between one party and the other. And if that party breaches that duty of care, which is usually you know to take reasonable care and take reasonable steps to make sure they're safe, 
etc. For example, you've got someone come to your house, you've got to take reasonable steps to make sure they're safe, etc. A um, little bit less so for trespassers, and usually as long as you put a sign up to say warning, then that's usually for sufficient. But generally, you've got a duty of care between one and the other. If one party breaks that duty of care and they are uh, not taking reasonable steps to make sure they are safe, then that would be a breach of the duty of care. But then you have to assess whether that caused any damage or injury. And so that is one part that a lot of people trip up on when they bring one of these lawsuits. Did the, did the negligence cause the loss, damage or injury? So first you establish a duty of care, then you have to establish a breach of that duty of care, and then it's the causation aspect. Did that breach cause the loss, damage or injury? And so for those that are going through anything kind of similar, hopefully that helps you to understand. Some of you I've certainly had clients and friends of mine that have not understood where a, a company or whatever has not been held to, to be liable in negligence, even though it would seem that they should be liable, typically in medical cases and things like that. They feel like they really should be liable in negligence for someone's injury or death and so on. But unless the negligence, um, as in the breach of duty of care, even if that was existing, uh, if that didn't cause the injury or any death, and for, so for example, they would have died anyway, for example, then unless it caused it or was a major contributory factor, then the claim will generally fail. So I hope that is um, not too broad an overview. It's a lengthy topic, but I just th thought I'd throw that in because I forgot to put it in there. Another headline just says, can a Disney Plus subscription keep a widower from suing Disney in court? Now, this has obviously brought Disney to the headlines, potentially unfairly if they genuinely have no liability in this case, because if they don't own or operate the restaurant and just because they lease out, perhaps they lease out the space and the land or whatever and actually have no responsibility for the restaurant, you would have to look at the terms and conditions of the purchase of the tickets to the theme park as a whole and whether they incorporate liability for any restaurants or whatever within the park. That would be another thing for the lawyers to look at. But again, then you'd compare those with the Disney Plus terms and conditions and whether they can be conflated, whether one will over, override and supersede the other. That again is something for the lawyers to look at. But as I say, the, the reputational uh, management here is paramount, I would have thought. And I would have thought that looking at this, albeit a technicality for the liability here uh, with the Disney Plus purchase, if the lawsuit is over $50,000, I would say that this has the potential, even if Disney are completely blameless in this scenario, I would say that the reputational damage is potentially north of $50,000, even if they had no responsibility to pay it. Those are my thoughts on this, and that's why I think this is a really strange bit of news, a really strange headline. Disney has responded to say they are just defending themselves, and Mr. Piccolo's lawyers have responded to say, well, in effect, this technicality is seeking to bar 150 million Disney Plus subscribers from ever prosecuting one of these cases. So that is all a bit strange. I've had lots of emails about it. Those are my thoughts so far without seeing the, the filings myself. Those are just the overall things that we'd be considering as lawyers. And as I say, I'm not a US attorney. This happened in Florida. So perhaps there's some US attorneys can uh, shed some light on it. But let me know your thoughts here. Um, hopefully that's given you a balanced view why you may or may not blame Disney, whether you did before or not. Let me know in the comments what you think, because after all, like I said, this is reputational management and potential reputational damage. So with that, as I say, with a neutral and fair perspective, I hope you subscribe to my channel as an alternative to mainstream media because these headlines, let's be blunt about it, these headlines make Disney look really bad and don't necessarily give you the neutral overall objective picture that I hope humbly that I have done today. So for that, please do subscribe and I'll see you next time.